So after a two wins out of two start for this career mode, we are continuing onwards today. My name is The Gaming Blake and welcome back. Today I am playing on a Thursday which scares the crap out of me because I have a lot of bad luck on Thursdays. But beside that we are about to play the next game of the season against Doncaster. And this should be a really difficult one which is why we've got to send out a strong lineup. So starting in goal we're going to have Jordan Archer. We Reefle Shammer getting a second chance in the lineup. And Mark Beavers joining him at centre-back. Joel Martin starts at left-back with Edwards, Carlos Edwards at right-back. Right midfield, despite being in bad form, is going to be Chris Taylor. Jack Powell and Ben Thompson, the midfield two, despite the option, of course, of Sean Williams and Ed Upson. Shane Ferguson gets his, his usual spot at left midfield. And starting up front, a lot of competition up front right now between Gregory Morrison and Naki Wells. Considering they all scored to begin with, I've decided to go with Wells and Morrison because, to be honest, Morrison had too good of a start not to appear in this first game today. We're playing three games this episode, so the highlights might be short or they might be longer depending on how interesting or non-interesting the game is. But we're going to jump into this first game against Doncaster and let's see how this game gets on. Just going to whip this in, aiming for the back post. Anyone going to get on that? Nope, they are. Joel Martin's still up here to get that. Joe Martin deliver a cross, maybe. Because he played that out to he's played that out to Jack Powell. Pass through. Finish that! Oh, he's hit the post! Shoot, rebound! Someone shoot! Come on! Someone's got to put this in the net! There's still chance, still there! Come on, Thompson! Ah! That's a good chance wasted there in a scramble. But we've hit the post with Ben Thompson, I think it was, who've got the shot off. Oh, that's... Devastating, the first real chance of the half there, coming late into the first half. The so half time, and beside that post shot from Ben Thompson, not really much to show you. I've been really, well, really sloppy, but mind. Doncaster has just not created half, any real up? chances. Steve Morrison's team, shots were just uh, terrible today. Hasn't been as impressive as it has been, but of course we did have that chance later on with Ben Thompson, who's looking a little tired. I want to leave him on a little longer before making any changes, I feel. I feel like Lee Gregory could need to come on at some point, but right now, we're we're looking better on the attack than Doncaster, and until such underway. time as I need to worry about scoring, then I will bring him in. It's an exhibition here. Oh, we've it's got to get rid of that. Oh, bloody there. hell. And that is the first real chance that Doncaster have had. The ball's come in nicely. He's leaped over. Uh, the defender there and that's just poor really they've made two changes I think I'm gonna make a change now Morrison has really let me down he has not proven himself worth worthy to be on the pitch today Lee Gregory's coming on Reefle Shama shouldn't really be taking the captain's armband but you guys can just look past that because he's not actually the captain I guess but I'm really disappointed with Morrison he had his chance to play first team and he's blown it to be honest Alright, so nothing else is happening. Time for some more subs. Going to bring in Upson and Williams for the tired Thompson and Jack Powell. And those are going to be our three subs for today. We really Whoa. need some attacking emphasis now, so I'm going ultra attacking. Don't want to flood side. all out when we're nil-nil, but we really should be doing better than we are today. And we just haven't brought an attacking Prince game today. Oh, that's a great ball. Oh, my God. He's onside as well. And he scored. Oh, wait. No, he's not onside. I thought he was on. Oh, and I think they did as well. 82nd minute. They went to score. And Archer couldn't save it. But he is offside. I really want to see that again because he, he looked like he was offside to me. But how close was it? Oh, it was inches. It was actually a lot closer. That could have gone either way. A good call from the ref. The subs have come on now. And that was scored, way too close for comfort. To, to, and that is the full time the whistle. Hardly any tonight. chances in that game well, at all. That was a really, right really, really, really disappointing Look game like all around. I don't think we team, deserve to win that as well. That 82nd draw. minute yeah, last sides, goal that they field, scored that was disallowed by the offside. Probably the best chance of the game, the cleanest at least. And it was just a poor performance all around. Man of the match for me, actually, I'd give it to Reeple Shammer, and I think they have as well. Oh, no, they've given it to their defender, uh, Butler. I'd actually give it to Reeple Shammer, who actually had a fantastic game at centre-back. Obviously, you don't really get to see the centre-back clips. If you guys want to see some defensive or some goal more goalkeeping clips, uh, I'm more than happy to post them because we've got a lot of tackles 
in that English, game. We played really well defensively, one. I feel. Blackpool, Attacking one. was really lacking, Shrewsbury but um, it just Bradford didn't really City, work nil. out for us that game. Sheffield but that is our first two. game without a win. Certain it is a draw, one. and that is a little Alexandra. disappointing. Right, so looking one. at our emails, Central we actually have an United, offer for two. Aiden O'Brien, who um, is a rotational United, player in the squad, two. does have a little bit of potential, but I don't know how much. They've offered a really good deal here of 425. I'm going to ask for 500 and then let him go. This could be a costly mistake because I know they did say he has some decent potential, but right now he isn't really performing. He did score in the, in the Capital One Cup game, if you remember, but um, I don't know how I feel about him. And right now we've got some decent striking options. We've got a decent left midfield option, so I'm not really sure where he fits in the squad. Warsaw come back and said 425 for Aiden O'Brien, and do you know what? I'm very close to accepting it because the extra funds can help us fund the signing of Lukaku. I think I'm going to do it. It's going to suck to let Aiden O'Brien go. He's a fantastic player in Millwall in real life. Probably one of our better players right now. But right now, he doesn't really fit the first team picture, and I think that we could do with the fun. And there we go. Confirmation that Aiden O'Brien has sold extra funds to the club. It's disappointing to let a player like that go. It was a huge gamble, and I hope it pays off. But we are coming into the game now against Shrewsbury Town. I only want to make a few changes. I'm going to take out the Jack Powell and bring in Williams from the start. Lee Gregory seems to be in form, whereas Morrison clearly wasn't. Uh, we're going to give the captain's armband over to the second in command, as it were, Mark Beavers. But otherwise, the squad seems fine. So, oh, and by the way, I've decided to just cut out all the transfer stuff until I've actually completed a deal. So if you're wondering where all the stuff is, I'm just going to cut all that out just to show the games because the last episode kind of dragged on a bit. Taylor. Thompson. Thompson. Can he find the pass? He has found the pass. Naki Wells strikes it. Oh, it takes a few bubbles there. And it's just come off the keeper in the end. That's a great save. Naki Wells tries to get it across the body. Takes a deflection there off the defender. And he nearly got his second goal of the season. We're going to try and whip this in, though. See what we can do. Beavers too close to the keeper. Williams is going to strike it. Oh, too many deflections. Oh, it is in, though. We've got one. Another rebounded goal. I think for Lee Gregory. I'm not 100% sure. No, that's Lee Gregory, right? Yeah, that is Lee Gregory at his final. His second rebounded goal for his second goal of the season. Sean Williams strikes it decently, deflected out, and that's actually a nice finish there from Lee Gregory, despite it being a rebound. Open net. He had to put it away, and he did. He's calm under pressure. Second goal for Lee Gregory, and it is 1 0 to Millwall in the first 16 minutes of the game. Now they're running down this wing. Well, it's a good ball in. Well headed away from Reefal Shama. He does he that clear. consistently throughout. Oh, Great bloody save. hell. That was actually a really good shot keeper. on the spin there. I was it's not prepared for that one. That's a very nice strike, though, from Shrewsby on the spin. On the spin. I can't even speak English today. Keeper. Yeah, nice one. Danger averted. Yeah. The decisions that football oh, well done there. And now we've got a chance. Anyway. Gregory. Oh, what a pass back to Naki Wells. Touches it down. Cuts inside. Has a go. What a finish from Naki Wells. His second goal for the club in three appearances. And he goes to celebrate with the rest of the bench. A fantastic finish there from Naki Wells. How he's managed to get that much spin on the finesse, I have no idea. But it was worth a strike. And a great goal. And the assist goes to Lee Gregory, I feel. That's a great pass. Look at this. Great pass from Lee Gregory. He cuts inside. And what a finish from Naki Wells. His second goal in three appearances for the club. And that's a really good start for Naki Wells. Some people were questioning his signing. I know a few of my friends were saying I should have gone harder on, on Adam Armstrong. But it proved to be worth it in the end. Naki Wells has Just got his second goal for the club. And let's hope this goal scoring form he's acquired can continue for the rest of the season. A decent pass. Naki Wells has done well to shimmy it. Now can start a run. He has options. He finds an option in Williams. That's nice. Oyedema has the speed to run inside. Low and hard cross. And it's in. Yeah, it's an own goal. What a strike, though, from the own goal. Is Zach Whitbread, who... Wow. I'm, I'm stunned. Oyedema's obviously celebrating it. But what well, it on a earth? It what a strike. He absolutely... He even that, chips Alan. it. Look no, at the way he kicks it. He absolutely chips it past his game. But that's a fantastic strike. Or your Dima putting the cross in low and hard, so I guess he technically well, gets the assist, I guess. Now, I don't know if he'll go down as an assist goal, for that, but do you know what? He definitely full-powered that at the keeper, and what a finish 
for three nil. It's a comprehensive so that is full time, and what a huge victory here for Millwall. Really, that own goal in, the, in late yeah, in the second half produced us a really good well result here. It's going to be hard to call man of the match because I'd either give it to the two centre backs or I would give it to Lee Gregory. Naki Wells had a nice game, but of course he could have done better. With, I feel he only he doesn't really have many shots in a game, but he played well. I personally give it to Lee Gregory for a goal and assist. He played fantastically well all game, but. In shock con contrast to the Doncaster game, we played fantastically throughout the game. Man of the match, let's have a look who it's going to go to. I think it's going to Lee Gregory. No, they've given it to Jordan Archer, who didn't really have any saves. I don't know why there's six saves. I guess they were mainly crosses. But Jordan Archer gets man of the match, so I guess I'll just give it to him. In fourth. Okay, we have finally, after points. long negotiations, fifth, reached an agreement with Jordan Lukaku. Sixth, and of course, City we don't points. have the money for in it, seventh, but I think we do. So I'm just going to quickly stall, just go over to transfer eighth, allocations. Sheffield but I'm telling United you, there was a lot of money and we had to risk Aiden O'Brien's departure to acquire the, a man of this kind of ability. But I tell you, it is worth every penny. With I two have, points. Oh, we don't Fourth have bottom, enough. Blackpool no, we don't have enough bottom, to sign Port him. With three the points. wages just doesn't work out. We don't have the budget to complete this allocate this uh, purchase. Oh no, he's going to be a really good deal. We need to see if we can make that happen. We'll have to see if any offers come in for some players. We might have to let people go. All right, it is cup football time in the final game of the episode. We're playing against Gillingham. This is the lineup I'm going with. Forward starts in goal. He had a very good, nice cup. Uh, had a very good first uh, cup appearance there, saving us towards the end, if you remember correctly, in that 3-2 game. Byron Webster and Tony Cray complete our centre-back partnership. Webster will be given the captain's armband. No, he won't, because I just realised who else is on the pitch. Uh, right back, Marlon Romeo, no surprise there. Trying to get him some more minutes, and Chesmain starts at left back to give Joel Martin a rest. Left midfield, Ed Upson hasn't been playing that many minutes because he's battling a lot with other positions, but he's playing. Ben Thompson, who I think has played the most for us out of anyone in the team, starts with Jack Powell in the middle of the park. Fred Oyedema, after a fantastic game, coming off the bench to Shrewsbury, deserves his starting game. And we'll see what he can do in, for, in a full game situation. And Morrison and Philpott, once again, completing the striking partnership. Uh, we're going to leave Gregory on the bench as an option. But otherwise, I'm not too um, fussed about this game. It's a cup game. It's going to be good to see. Interesting to see if Morrison can get himself into some kind of form again. Because he had a really bad game. Oh, that's really going to bug me. Ah, it's 4K short as well. But we'll see if we can make that deal happen in the late episodes. Because the transfer window is coming to an end. So we'll see what happens. But for now, let's play the final game in this episode against Gillingham. A big game for Millwall. So let's hope we can produce another win and progress further in the Capital One Cup than we already have. Those two boys up front, they have oh no, good that's poor. Good understanding. That's really poor. The and the first We're strike goes to them. They might have rushed this chance, I feel. Maybe a bit more time to drag it in. Nah, he was being closed down. And Ford probably would have got that as well. So that's a waste of a... Ch oh no. Oh, thank fuck for that. I hate when that happens. What a terrible touch. Rory Donnelly. Oh no, that's a good shot. Oh, I think that's going to be a corner. No, it's a goal, sure, kick. It's a goal kick. He did enough to put him off his stride there. Oh man, that was actually decent defending considering he never got a touch. Coverage here to tell us about the West Oh no, goal. this is dangerous. Once again, whipping it in. Romeo's lobbed his own keeper, but he heads it away. No! Shaky goalkeeping there. He really has got to command the box there, Ford. And that is not a good start. They've dominated us since opening 20 minutes. We really need to try and switch on the attacking play. Jamie Philpott's done it well. Morrison skips inside. Finish it. What a finish. Stephen Morrison. He has his bad days, but he can produce goals like that. Jamie Philpott with the assist there. He did really, really well to pass it off to him. A nice little skip from Morrison. Still showing he has a little spring in his step. And a fantastic finish there from the Millwall boys. Look at this. Jamie Philpott does well to tackle. To lays it corner. off beautifully. Well, Worried about that, but he skips over that. him. And a fantastic finish from Morrison. His second goal in the Capital One Cup. And hopefully in a game very with very well few chances, that should be enough to see us through to the next round. Hopefully, 
And I'm going to play a bit more defensive, I feel. But otherwise, that should see us through to the next round. Some players limbering up that, away team. Substitution uh, kind of one, but not one well enough. Oh, no, that's right a great turn. Great. Oh, oh. Saved. oh. <laughs> what the fuck happened there? I couldn't even speak. Bloody hell. And that was a really good chance there. Best chance of the game for Gillingham so far. Well saved by Ford, though. Is right. Oh, bloody hell, that was a really good chance, really actually. Just drifting wide there. Again, I think Paul might have had that covered. That but it's not looking like we're going to have an line. easy cruising yeah, to end this yeah. game. Grimacy. Look at that, we're not even preventing them through. And that is the win. I thought Morrison's goal would be enough to seal it. They had a few chances late on, as you probably saw. But it wasn't enough in the end. We progressed to the third round of the Capital One Cup. Ford keeps a clean sheet. And Morrison produces a goal which he really needed. The striking problem is becoming an issue because all of them are scoring the goals. That's Morrison's second goal the in the Capital today, One. He never scored in the league game. Lee Gregory has two in the league. And so does Naki Wells. So we've got a real striking problem. You guys are going to have to let me know. Comment who you want to be the striking partnership to start off with. If it's not working out, then I'll change them. English but for right cup. now, all three AFC of them are Wimbledon playing really two. well. So it's kind Majesty of hard United. to tell Nil. what to do. Alright, so that is going to wrap up the episode and it leaves us in a tied first place. I'm assuming we're top on goal difference. Yes, we are. Five goals scored, one conceded. That is fantastic. And I think it's already, yep, the best defensive team in the league. That's a great start and that's a great way to end it, I feel. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment what you want me to do with the striking situation, what you want me to do with the Jordan Lukaku situation, and just get involved. Also, if there's anything else you want me to play... Um, outside of FIFA or inside of FIFA, let me know. Um, preferably not Ultimate Team. If you guys want to see that, we'll give it a go.